Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Dystonia Introduction Dystonia is a movement disorder. It causes your muscles to flex involuntarily. This means your muscles contract without you making them do so. This causes twisting and repetitive motions. Sometimes these motions are painful. Symptoms of dystonia may be mild or severe. They may make it hard for you to perform your normal day-to-day -day activities. This program talks about dystonia and its symptoms. The causes, diagnosis, and treatment of dystonia are also covered. Dystonia Dystonia affects muscles and movement. It can affect just one muscle, a group of muscles, or all of your muscles. Symptoms of dystonia often start in childhood. They can also start in the late teens or early adulthood. Some cases worsen over time. Others are mild. There are several different types of dystonia. The types are based on which areas of the body are affected. The main categories of dystonia are focal dystonia, generalized dystonia, multifocal dystonia, segmental dystonia, hemidystonia. Focal dystonia only affects one specific part of the body. Generalized dystonia affects more or all of the body. Multifocal dystonia affects two or more unrelated body parts. Segmental dystonia affects two or more parts of the body that are next to each other. Hemidystonia affects the arm and leg on the same side of the body. Focal dystonia is the most common type of dystonia. The most common form of focal dystonia is known as cervical dystonia. Cervical dystonia affects the muscles in the neck that control the position of the head. This causes the head to turn to one side or be pulled forward or backward. Sometimes the shoulder is pulled up. Cervical dystonia can happen at any age. Most people first experience symptoms in middle age. It often begins slowly. Symptoms often level off after a few months or years. About 10% of those with cervical dystonia may have a sudden remission. This means that the symptoms stop, but the remission may not last. Blepharospasm is the second most common type of focal dystonia. It affects the muscles that control eye blinking. Both eyes are usually affected. Spasms may cause the eyelids to close completely. This may cause functional blindness, even though the eyes are healthy and vision is normal. Dystonia that affects the muscles of the head, face, and neck is known as craniofacial dystonia. When craniofacial dystonia and blepharospasm happen at the same time, it is known as Mage syndrome. Oromandibular dystonia affects the muscles of the jaw, lips, and tongue. This dystonia may make it hard to open or close the jaw. Speech and swallowing can also be affected. Spasmodic dysphonia involves the muscles that control the vocal cords. It causes strained or whispery speech. Task-specific dystonia is a type of focal dystonia. It tends to happen only when you are doing a certain activity. An example is writer's cramp. It affects the muscles of the hand and sometimes the forearm. Writer's cramp only happens during handwriting. Similar focal dystonia types have also been called typist's cramp and musician's cramp. Musician's dystonia is a focal dystonia that affects musicians. Musician's dystonia affects the ability to play an instrument or to perform. It can involve the hand and keyboard or string players, the mouth and lips and wind players, or the voice and singers. Symptoms Dystonia causes slow, repetitive movements. It can also cause a person to hold abnormal poses. The motions caused by dystonia may be painful. Some people with dystonia may have a tremor. The symptoms might start in one area of the body. 
Sometimes certain movements, like writing with a pen, can trigger symptoms. The symptoms may become more obvious as time goes on and get worse during times of stress, anxiety, or tiredness. The effect of dystonia on your daily life depends on the part of your body it affects. It also depends on whether your muscle contractions are mild or severe. Symptoms can affect the face, eyelids, jaw, tongue, vocal cords, head, neck, hand, or arm. The first symptoms can be very mild. Early symptoms may be noticeable only after prolonged exertion. They may also be triggered by stress or fatigue. Over a period of time, the symptoms may become more noticeable or widespread, but sometimes this may not happen. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Complications Depending on the type of dystonia, you may experience complications. These can include problems with the structure or function of the affected body part. Sometimes dystonia can prevent a person from being able to do certain activities. For example, dystonia that affects the eyes might limit your ability to see. Other complications may include abnormal posing of the head or problems speaking or swallowing. You may experience exhaustion and pain from the involuntary movements. These problems can be difficult to manage and frustrating. They may cause anxiety or depression. Causes The causes of dystonia can be divided into three groups. Idiopathic, genetic, acquired. Idiopathic dystonia does not have a clear cause. Healthcare providers don't know what causes most cases of dystonia. It may be the result of multiple factors. Dystonia may be caused by a problem in the brain. Certain parts of the brain handle messages about muscle contractions. These structures are called the basal ganglia. There are several genetic causes of dystonia. It may be caused by defective genes inherited from one or both parents. Symptoms may vary widely, even among members of the same family. Some people who inherit a defective gene may not develop dystonia. Other genetic or even environmental factors may play a role. Acquired dystonia is also called secondary dystonia. It is caused by damage to the brain. It could also be caused by exposure to certain types of drugs. Acquired dystonia often levels off and does not spread to other parts of the body. Dystonia caused by taking a medicine often goes away if the drugs are stopped. Another medical condition may be causing the dystonia, such as Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, Wilson's disease. Other possible causes of secondary dystonia are an infection, like tuberculosis, an injury that happened at birth, brain damage or a brain tumor, carbon monoxide poisoning or lack of oxygen, such as from a stroke, perineoplastic syndromes, Diagnosis Your healthcare provider will first ask about your signs and symptoms. He or she will also ask questions about your medical history and give a physical exam. You may have other tests done. These can help determine if underlying conditions are the cause of your symptoms. Some tests that may be done are blood or urine tests to check for toxins, CT scan, MRI, EMG. In most cases of dystonia, no abnormalities are seen using MRI or other imaging tests. Treatment. Healthcare providers don't have a cure for dystonia, but its symptoms can be managed. Botox is often the most effective treatment for focal dystonia. It is a drug made from a toxin. The toxin is made by a specific type of bacteria. Small amounts are injected into affected muscles. This paralyzes the muscles and prevents the contractions caused by dystonia. The effect of Botox is often seen a few days after the injections. It can last for several months before the injections must be repeated. As with any treatment, there may be side effects. 
Ask your healthcare provider about these. Medicines can sometimes improve dystonia symptoms. Some medicines increase dopamine in the brain. Dopamine is a chemical involved with muscle movement. Certain types of therapy may also help improve your symptoms. Physical therapy can improve your strength, mobility, and fitness. Speech therapy may help with dystonia of the voice. Massage and stretching may help with aching muscles. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, is another treatment option. DBS involves placing electrodes in the brain that help control abnormal muscle movements. In some more severe cases of dystonia, surgery can disable certain brain regions or nerves. This type of surgery is rarely done. It may be used to treat dystonia if other therapies haven't worked. Alternative treatments may or may not help. They include biofeedback, meditation or yoga, acupuncture. Living with dystonia can be challenging. It can make daily life frustrating or uncomfortable. Sharing your feelings with a therapist or a support group may help. Support groups can help you meet others with similar conditions. They can also give you more information about dystonia. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Dystonia affects muscles and movement. It can affect just one muscle, a group of muscles, or all of your muscles. Symptoms of dystonia often start in childhood. They can also start in the late teens or early adulthood. Some cases worsen over time. Others are mild. There are several different types of dystonia. The types are based on which areas of the body are affected. Dystonia causes slow, repetitive movements. It can also cause a person to hold abnormal poses. The motions caused by dystonia may be painful. Some people with dystonia may have a tremor. The symptoms might start in one area of the body. Sometimes, certain movements like writing with a pen can trigger symptoms. The symptoms may become more obvious as time goes on and get worse during times of stress, anxiety, or tiredness. The effect of dystonia on your daily life depends on the part of your body it affects. It also depends on whether your muscle contractions are mild or severe. Healthcare providers don't know what causes most cases of dystonia. There is no cure for dystonia. But healthcare providers can provide you with treatments to improve some of your symptoms. Thank you for using Explain.